Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the podcast of dreams. With me, Mark Maloney, and today I'm joined by two very, very special creatures. Creature A is Peter Cassidy, a man who you will know as French Toast. He hasn't been on the podcast for quite a while, but he is old friend. The amount of fucking tales I could tell you about that lad. Oh, he's one of the fucking most daftest bastards with a heart of gold. But now he's got his shit together. Uh, and the other creature, B. Some people say he looks like Chris Moltisanti from Sopranos. He has some Navajo in him. He's got some Sicilian. He's got a little bit of Jordanian Sephardic Jew. And he's also got a little bit of uh, pagan wizard from the... <laughs> From the megalithic days in Ireland. That's Stephen the Cowboy Kelly. How are you doing, Stevie? I'm right, Pete. You're very welcome. To... That's a handshake for anyone that, who's not... That is a Another handshake. Much, multi-layered uh, description of me, uh, Martin. And it was all bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you know, it was all true. <laughs> oh, he's a man of intrigue and mystery. So, uh, lads, it's good to have you. I'm, I'm back I'm back doing another You're podcast. Back in, the, in the homestead. Yeah, I've had a bit of a hiatus because life has uh, it's been a bit fucking tricky the last couple of weeks and just trying to fit everything in has been, you know, it's been tough. So I just want to thank everyone else out there, especially my patrons. You know, those nice people who uh, who actually believe in me and give me some money. Appreciate that. Uh, if there's a few more of you out there, yeah, you know what, hit me up. Hit him Bitch. up, hit him up, hit him up, that, man. Hit him up. Hit me up because you were, I've got a big flu. You were, you were gigging in Galway at the weekend. You know what, Steve? I was gigging in Galway at the weekend. Mm-hmm. And uh, a shout out to uh, to Kevin in, in the Roisin and, and Uncle Googie for uh, for putting me on in the crane upstairs. And Mick from the crane. Uh, I, that was a brilliant gig. Great atmosphere, yeah. Tell me more about how good the gig was. Uh, <laughs> 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 not picking yourself up or anything, yeah? No, I mean, but not at all. The atmosphere all, was very good. Now, I came in late because... Um, I thought you were going to do the Irish thing. You know how you say doors uh, show starts at eight o'clock. Oh right. Like, usually yeah. that means half in Ireland eight, half eight, eight yeah, nine eight o'clock. o'clock. But apparently you've turned Swedish on us and are very punctual these days. Yes, I have gone very so punctual. I came in sort of towards the end, but the atmosphere. You came. I did <laughs> all over the gap. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I came in. The atmosphere was was buzzing. I mean buzzing. I mean you seen you seen the crack. But where was Buzz? <laughs> he was he was knocking about. He was knocking about. In spirit. Were you playing tunes as well? I was playing tunes, Pete, as well, yeah, I played nice. a couple of tunes towards the end of the set. You know, I just did some nice little uh, nice little ditty just at the end of the gig, you just go... Cozy vibe. Cozy vibe, man, yeah. You know how shit be all up in this biage. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, lads, the Splinter Group, as in, like, you're kind of like the, the, the continuum IRA yeah. uh, in the Hardy books, whereas <laughs> I, I would be kind of like we're the real IRA. Continuing the dream. Yeah, yeah continuing the dream. Uh, the Viper, he'd be like the INLA. <laughs> the Harry Coach stuff. Uh, and what would uh, what would Owen be? Owen would be. I can't believe it's not the IRA. <laughs> <laughs> to anybody that's listening, that's references to all the spin-offs and yeah. all our individual products. Yeah, we're not so, actually we're not paramilitary. <laughs> no. yeah. We're not even from the north, man. But that's what a paramilitary person would say. <laughs> oh, touche, touche. I tell you one thing, fucking boys, you don't know who you're talking to up there, do you? Yeah, and then we have Mikey, Mikey Salmon, who is will be joining us later on, but not on this podcast. And Mikey, makes, the Hitman Salmon. He makes yeah. up the three bucks left trio. He's a very energetic man, isn't he? Uh, like, at times, at times, at times, at times. Is that when the lights are off and he's in the cot? Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah, he mightn't say anything for a long time, but when he does say something, it's pure gold. Uh, is he a bit like Mount Etna? When he goes, he fucking goes. He erupts. He erupts all over the place. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah so, uh, so how's it going, lads? You got a gig at the weekend? We do indeed. In the Grand Social in Dublin, November second, Saturday. Doors at half seven. I feel like a, a walking advertisement here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you, you've got to do it, but you've got a very special guest. Who's we, that? We do have a special guest. Very talented, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Very yeah, special yeah, guest. Yeah, Who's yeah. that? Vinnie Murta. <laughs> 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 yeah, he's very good, man. I played the mini gins. Uh, but uh, we have another special guest as well. Um, the leader, the host of this podcast, aka Mark Maloney. Fuck, I'm going to be on a stage You are, yeah. Shit, you're, man, when did that happen? You're going to close the show. You're going to bring some musical and comedy to the end of the show. I'll be the showstopper at the end. You'll be the showstopper yeah, yeah, yeah. at the end. That'll be a nice, nice little jaunt up to Dublin. When, when, they're try- when they're trying to drag you off the stage, don't, don't listen to them. No, man, I'll be just, just yeah, blasting yeah. out tunes such as... Uh, na 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 you know, 
Put it on Cat Stevens. Fair enough. Yeah, y- Yusuf right. Mohan, I think he's called nowadays. Yeah. Which 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 do you prefer? You prefer the music? Yeah, I'm doing a lot more gigging, man. You know, I, I just like music was always what I wanted to do, and um, you know, and then I just fell in to the comedy because I'm a mad prick, and uh, the rest is history. Yes. Am I the real deal? You are the real deal. When you came over when you were twelve or thirteen, we re- quickly realised that you were um, you were a complete header, a legend. Don't get me wrong, but a complete header all the same. Yeah, that sounds about so, right. That right. sounds about right. Yeah, yeah nothing's changed. <laughs> nothing, nothing. <laughs> right, you've got a bit worse. Uh, it's funny, when I met Liam Gallagher there back on Paddy's Day, I was like, one half of him was like, ah, some of it must be a bit of an act. After I met him, I was like, nah, man, he's the real deal. He is the real deal. He'll rumble, do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. Who oh, yeah. fuck, he said that? Oh, you saw it? He's that as pure natural. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But I it's think true. that's why people like him, man, because he's, uh, he, 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 well, he wears his heart on the sleeve. Yeah. Bit like myself, I've got no filter, man. I fucking blabber to anyone who'll listen. True, true. So, uh, good, t- good thing at times, and then other yeah. times, then it go, against you. go against you. Yeah, you give all your trade secrets away, then that's it. Concert. Um, so set the scene. What is it? It's Halloween night. It's Halloween, man. Yeah, it's Halloween. This is a very spooky podcast. Yeah. Um, I've um, I, I didn't see any ghosts or ghouls, but I was watching Neighbours there, and there was a. Lad that got stabbed. Lad got stabbed in a, in a hedgerow maze yeah. by a bride. With a cheese knife. With a cheese knife. Usually, yeah. you, I was just looking at that myself, and yeah. I, usually them soaps don't go with the time. They usually keep it very general, so they don't have a Halloween, or yeah. they don't have mm. Christmas. But I don't think uh, that was... Synced it up well. I don't think they synced it up well. I think it was just... Was a just by chance? Well, we just dressed right? up as werewolves and... and oh, had, were they? Yeah, yeah, I didn't see that bit. It's just that it was a wedding. Sorry, yeah, man. They had, like... There's blood dripping out of their mouths. Oh, okay. They had, like, buckets. like that, I don't know. But they also have buckets with jack o' lanterns, yeah. loot buckets as they're sold up in Tesco. What are they called? Loot buckets. Loot buckets. Yeah, yeah one euro up in be Tesco. The way, be the it's way that was started off in Ireland. Did. All those years ago. With yeah. the turnips. Turnips, yeah. 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 Hey, Actually, that was a turnip, it's hard, man. That was a turnip for the books. <laughs> the <laughs> Americans <laughs> came and I used didn't pumpkins. I see that one coming. Oh, I'm, uh, yeah. So, uh, lads, what's the crack? How's the, uh, how's the, uh, the, the, the three books left? Kicking off, you enjoying yeah. yourself. I had I had some people getting onto me, going, "Hey, Martin, what you think about like? Isn't it a bit cheeky that they're using the three books left? As in, like they're the only Hardy books left now?" I was like, "No, nah, not really. I fucking hats off to them because what you what were you supposed to do, man? You know what I mean? Like we had a we had a whole like live show, and fucking ready to tour internationally. And next thing, we just that fucking fizzled out. So well, it's it, sitting we, on we your hands, to, man. You we know wanted I mean? to keep the same vein, but then kind of drift away. So slowly. Instead, when we get established, we'll kind of drift away and do different things, like hopefully a sketch show and hopefully get pioneers like yourself in Merton, you know? Mm, and uh, It doesn't, I mean, we, 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 we obviously keep the same vein as the Hardy Bucks through a lot of things, but then a lot of the things then were like going completely off, yeah. off the Hardy Bucks. In fact, I'd say our live show is very, very little Hardy Bucks and more like wild yeah. stand up. Yeah. 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 Well, in saying that, that's Hardy Box as well. Yeah. We, 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 what What can you What can be expected? Because I haven't seen his live. I'll find out on. Yeah. It's it's, it's, li- it's lively. It's very lively. Um, we we start off slowly. Like we, we try and we try and do bring in other uh, acts as well. Uh, give like up and coming comedians a bit of a a bit of a lift. Yeah, that's a nice touch. Yeah. And then ramp up to to us coming on. Um, we've actually we're going to try and get a bit of music involved in it as well. Like, I know that. So it's a be- full. It's a full. You know, it's a full entertainment, a night of entertainment, oh, yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah, indeed. Would you say, Stevie, it's like M- Mikey Schenker from the Scorpions? Live is life. Don't know the reference, but... <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> life is life. Yeah, uh, not that I listen to the Scorpions, like, especially post-Tokyo <laughs> tapes. Do you know what I mean? Um, um, well, I tell you what, you'll just have to come to the show and find yeah. out. Yeah, man. So if you listen to this and you're up in Dublin and you haven't missed the deadline, get in and see the lads. It'll be good crack. So uh, what's happening in the world of Stevie Kelly and Peter Cassidy other than other than the entertainment world? Pete, you are now a surf instructor for Fair Play TS, so you're, you're an infinitely better surf than I am. <laughs> it's all smoke and mirrors, Martin. If you get a reputation for getting up at 6 o'clock in the morning, you can sleep in the tin. That's true. <laughs> but would you consider yourself the most stoked of all the surfers? I'd say I would be the most stoked of all the surfers. Yeah. <laughs> I'd give a backstory to that uh, statement. We were in, what was it, La Hinch, about yeah. 10 years ago? That's right, yeah. And you read in the magazine and it said... Was it? Aaron is the most stoked of all the servers. And funny enough, Aaron, if you're listening to this, Aaron from La Hinch, uh, I was in college with him in Ballyfermot. Like, right, and was he the most stoked of all the servers? He was a cool dude, man. Yeah. Like, he, he was, uh, I think he was bringing surfboards in from South Africa. 
he's bringing his surplus and seeing if he can write. All right, yeah, yeah, Cape Town. And I was like, yeah, man, fucking, I wouldn't mind going for a surf. And then he's like, yeah, he's a lifeguard down there. I haven't seen him for years, man. But then we always remembered, like, it was funny reading it, like, You'd stay out for eight and nine hours. <laughs> but every, uh, a point break reference. Well, get away, comes back in. <laughs> he ain't coming back in. Just let me ride the wave, man. <laughs> just let me go, man. I just want that wave. That was uh, that was filmed in Torquay. That scene yeah. with Patrick Swayze at the end of Point Break. I, I don't found know this Bell's, bit. I don't know Bell's Beach, yeah. yeah. Torquay. Oh, Torquay. Bell's yeah. Beach, yeah. You're all movie buffs. I have literally no idea what you're talking about. Yeah. I, yeah. I've heard of Point Break, but I don't. Yeah. I, I but don't know. Know. Oh, it's me and Pete, and the, you know, like we were the kind of the, the, the spoiled little shits who were basically when all the other kids had had been they they tried to discipline them with good routines. We were the ones who they, the parents had just kind of given up on, and we were we were raised by late night TV. <laughs> yeah. So like uh, you know, you'd always like what happened to me is you'd be just, looking around, looking at Channel Four, looking for a boob. <laughs> you just, you'd just, you'd just be there wank surfing no, with the flute sense, out. Yeah. <laughs> no, but uh, we, what would happen? RT you used to have like a double bill of movies during the midweek, and you'd be like. You know, you'd watch the first one, the big movie, and then afterwards you're like, oh, I really should go to bed next thing. Next on Network 2, Deadbolt. <laughs> and I had your man who, who was, uh, it was the like security guy from, uh, what you call it, Independence Day, who shoots the coke camp, Baldwin. Uh, he's not one of the Baldwin brothers. Yes, yes. That's the character's name, was it? No, no. Oh. It, it was the guy in Full Metal Jacket who had the M60. Okay, okay. And, um, you know, he was... His name is 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 I think it's like it's not Adam Baldwin because that's yeah Adam is maybe it's Adam Baldwin, Baldwin I think why am I talking yeah. yeah so I there was a film I watched one night it was like Dead Bolt and then the woman ends up poisoning him with because uh, he was a baddie in it she ended up poisoning him with a a culture of botulism she was working on at the lab and that's how she got out of the Dead Bolt I remember she got to bed at like fifteen at like fucking half two in the morning going shit man I've got school and. <laughs> five hours <away. laughs> Pete, 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 does, Pete used well he used to be always referencing uh, movies and I, and then he'd look at me and I'd be like no, no, clue. I no idea what you're yeah. talking about man yeah. didn't watch it and it could be something that it could be a really really popular movie just never got into movies yeah I, no I did see Full Metal Jacket <laughs> but uh, <laughs> uh, so eventually he just gave up he, like he doesn't do it the references oh, right. anymore yeah. but, he knows how I get them though yeah, 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 yeah. The over the top like, yeah. <laughs> reference uh, to Stallone's arm wrestling v- the film mm-hmm. um, I was going to say something isn't it funny when you meet like and I was the same way myself when I started off in the acting game I was like oh I love this film oh, I really want to talk about films and then when you've been in the business as long as you have you don't give a shit man it's like, I, I can't stand watching TV. I'm like, oh, there he is, yeah. Oh, Killian, Killian Scott's on Dublin Murders, is he? Oh, fucking Nidge is in it. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm like... Because I haven't watched proper television in like the whole You're life. better off, though. It's You're better off. Better off. Well, it's, it's, it's becoming obsolete now, TV. Yeah, yeah but, it's fucking but bad. As, it's as, you, as you know, Pete, I'm literally glued to the phone and I'm yeah. trying not to... We should have a detox from the phone. detox altogether. Yeah. It's like That's why the surfing is good and the yeah. jits is good. You know what I mean? You can't have the phone when you're... I started into the jits. I'm yeah, starting, you start I'm rolling money, I'm, only I'm only in novice. I'm down in Ballina. It's straight blast gyms. Yeah, yeah, SPG Ballina. Yeah, Steve, yeah. Stevie Geddes uh, runs it. Uh, it's a great operation. I'd love to have more time to go down. It was Pete that got me involved. How long have you been rolling now, Steve? Literally, I've only done about six weeks. And yeah. sometimes I walk away and I'm like, she's I don't know if it's Yeah, but, but you're going to get your ass kicked in the beginning. Yeah. Do you know, and that's just part of it. Other times then I'm like, brilliant. And actually, the funny thing is, when I've been partnered up with the, the bigger lads... The stronger lad. It's a bit more... I, I, yeah, yeah, I enjoy challenge. it more because it's just... I, I suppose you don't want to hurt anyone either. I'm always yeah. afraid that I'll hurt, I'll hurt Yeah, but that's, that's the thing with me. I was always a bit too nice for it as well, man. Yeah. I go to put my like my knee on belly and it'd be like, oh, no, I feel a bit... But like, they're doing it to me. And I'm yeah. like... Yeah. Oh, well, it's, it, within reason, you don't want to be a spaz either. Yeah. Can I say spaz? So yeah. Yeah. if you want, mate. <laughs> and then, 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 then you don't want to be a wet noodle either. You don't want to be a wet noodle. You want to have a bit of resistance. But if it's just sparing, you kind of just... You well, know. it's nice when you go up against someone who's uh, a bit, you know, a bit tasty and they're, and they're a bit rude, and then you're like, "Grand, I can just go all in that." Yeah. But that's the great thing about jujitsu versus boxing. If you if you're going a hundred percent and you're sparring someone, someone's going to get knocked out. Yeah, okay. that's what yeah. Yeah. Our, our our fellow our instructor Jack Armstrong does be down there, and he does say. Has he got strong arms? He's got very strong. Arms. <laughs> <laughs> that's quite he's, apt. I think he's a purple belt. He's in, a purple, purple belt, belt yeah. in, 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 yeah. in, in, in jujitsu, and it's like he, he makes it look effortless you know so yeah. you know t- t- I could never see myself getting that far but then again I'm sure everyone that's you know what Steve you know what really annoys me mate if I if I had started training jujitsu at 18 and I did it every day until today I'd be like a black belt ages ago 
Yeah, but yeah. If, if the ball went in the goal, if the ball went in the goal, they would have won yeah. their game match. Right. Yeah. If, we, if Mayo didn't score two two own goals exactly. against Dublin yeah. a couple of years ago, we'd be all Ireland champions. I'll tell you another thing: if I'd started playing guitar at seven, I'd just be like floating around doing loads of gigs. But you know what might happen then is you might have lost the love for it. Do you know what I mean? Mm. You ever see these really strict parents and they force the kids into stuff? Yeah, and they right. might lose the love for it. Do you know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. It has to happen organically as yeah. well. Do you know? But then, but then we have we've always had this. Uh, Discussion. I wouldn't say an argument, but about talent versus work ethic. Yeah, work ethic. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's like, loads of books written about it. You know what's yeah. the name? Gladwell is it? Gladwell that wrote the book about uh, the two thousand hour myth. The in relation to Gladwell. Could be. I'm getting the <laughs> I'm getting the name wrong. Well, the ten thousand hours, you become a professional. You become a professional. They said about the Beatles when they went to Hamburg. They were. How they would they have got ten thousand hours? In apparently, they were playing for five hours a night, six nights a week. Yeah, fair. And you know what? Right. Fairness. And apparently they were tight then when they came back to Liverpool. Yeah, fair it's enough. the same about people that play ping pong. Or, but there has to be situation specific. Is it well. Bounce? Is that the name it's of the bounce. book? Bounce. That's yeah. another one, yeah. But um, that at home, there's, uh, it has to be situation specific as well. Like, it's no point me, you know, throwing punches out the back of the shed if nobody's there to coach me. Like. Yeah, exactly. Do you know what I mean? But yeah. if you happen to be in an area where there's a lot of coaches and you're throwing punches out the back of the shed, then you have the recipe to be a world champion. You know? It's about yeah. mentoring, isn't it? Like, yeah. as well. You know, yeah. if. Um, you know, like imagine if um, McGregor didn't meet um, John, John Cabinet. Cabinet. Well, he never would have been as successful yeah. as he is, you know. Well, well uh, luck uh, or maybe circumstances. Circumstances, a lot to do with it, I wouldn't say luck, but yeah. circumstances. What about circumcisions? Uh, yeah. Are you, <laughs> are you, are you circumcised? I, I don't know an awful lot about it, but apparently you do, Mark. Yeah. I, I was I was circumcised, man. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What, what of it? It's, it's, <laughs> it's bizarre the whole circumcision because I studied anatomy and physiology. A long time Fair ago, and I looked at him many a cock. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, and that's why all, you started studying. <laughs> but all the books, every anatomy physiology book, I'm probably boring people out there now. But it, every Willie is depicted as circumcised. Surely that gives a young fellow wish foreskin. I never, I, vibe, I yeah. never knew that. Yeah. Or, or is it not just that, that they pull the skin back? Well, they're just standing there like they, they, well, they don't do that with their cheeks or anything yeah, else. Fair enough, yeah. I mean, obviously, it's 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 designed to be there. Do you know what well, I mean? Well, this is it. Just like, like yeah, lopping it off. Fur? I can't imagine. Just keep 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 the bell warm in the yeah. in the winter. <laughs> <laughs> I love how we always get back to cock jokes. Yeah. Hey, actually, we're just a bunch of dickheads, man. Yeah, yeah. we're just we're just kids with weak at all. We're like, just so. scum. <laughs> <laughs> never grow up. Yeah, never grow up. We're like Adam Sandler and Grown Ups Nine. So, are you back <laughs> doing the jiu-jitsu, Marty? I went back here. I went back to Hilti, but I just haven't had the chance. My life has been life has been like a box of shitty chocolates lately. And yeah. It's like basically the last the last six weeks for me has been like I've gotten to the bottom of the box of Cadbury's roses and I've been chomping on nothing but the orange dark the chocolate, chocolate ones. the coffee ones, the coffee ones are hard strawberry ones. ones you know, right. all, all the all the nice ones like the like the purple, but Mer- Mer- purple hazelnut. Look, look, like this, look, at least you had some chocolate, Steve. You know what I mean? Do you know what, mate? It's a very good point, Pete. Yeah. You know, it's been a very good point. And there's always more boxes. There is, know. mate. Yeah, yeah, Christmas only around the corner, man. Exactly. You know what I mean? And, and uh, there'll be relatives dropping in boxes of USA biscuits that are the most boring assortment of biscuits. But when you were a kid, they were the best thing ever. Nah, mate. <laughs> no, nah. They were, they were sure. the best thing ever when you were a kid. Do you know what the best biscuit is? Fox's uh, chocolate vegan. Classic. Oh no. No, they're just a pack you get up and sausage, mate. What about uh, like I, I have I, I have not cut an I have an affinity for Fox's classics. My grandfather used to bring us down when we were waiting for school every morning he'd bring us down, you know, the wrapped they're all individually wrapped. Ooh. Ooh. And it was a lovely treat before he went to school. I can imagine it was. Yeah, yeah. nice. So you put, put a bit of a pep in your step yeah, that did. With some with some dude. Yeah. He's yeah. 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 You know. <laughs> So, yeah, that always brings me back to that. I've lowered the... <laughs> no, 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 It's nice. Your food brings you back. It's a memory. It's well, and food brings you back to is, yeah. a certain time. You know what I mean? A certain place. A certain face. I'd be, I'd be partial to a fox myself. Yeah. Oh, oh, I bet you would. Oh, yeah. Um, but what were you going to say, Pete? I can't remember what I was going to say. Oh, I'm training jiu-jitsu in uh, Hilly and Gracie up in Donegal. DT Fitness. But you're going up to a blue belt. I got yeah, up you fucking to, passed me out, man. Got the blue belt eventually, but all right, you still know fuck all at blue belt, really. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Well, yeah. you know what? Apparently, I was talking to my mate Haman about being a blue belt, and he was saying... Oh, Haman got the blue belt, yeah, did he? Oh, well, fair yeah. play. And he was saying, like, uh, it, is, it is a different level. You know, is, the best place you can be is a white belt, because you have no pressure, but you still have to... You still can learn. And uh, I was like, yeah, but, like, if you're a blue belt, man, you want to be able to... 
For sure, I was topping purple belts out when I was uh, well, you're still a white belt. Big dude, like you know what I mean. You're a strong dude. You were you missed the grade how many times? Like, <sighs> four or five four times. Four times. Broke my ribs as well. Believe it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I've slid back. It. Do you know? But I went, when I went back rolling, though, it was it's funny. Like the ones you're most who who could probably cause the most damage are white belts because they're so uh, yeah they don't know the movements. animation yeah. They don't know the movement. It's like, and then you go up against like uh, like Alan Finfu in, in All Stars, and he's like, "Come on, man, what are you doing waiting there? Come on!" I'm like, "Ah, oh, don't rush me." <laughs> so it's, it's that whole thing of like he's bring, he's making you bring and, and it shits you up then. Well, he's like, making you make the mistake, like yeah, yeah clever. So I was just I was like, "All right, for it. but yeah, that guy Eric, man, you know the the dude from uh, the half Brazilian American. Like, oh yes, he was he, in All Stars as well. Yeah, man, he he's like teaching now. He's probably a fucking brown belt boy. He just went. Like, he was just at it all the but time. But then he had fuck all else to do, man. He was he was working in a bar, and that was his whole life. Like, yeah. Trying to fucking, I've got you know commitments. I got dog, kids, and all that. Trying to trying to get shit together. But it's nice. It's even, like it's nice to just tip away at it. I think it's a nice like release. I think men need that release. You know? Yeah, they do, man. If I if I had like a, a jujitsu gym right on the doorstep, uh, I, man, I'd be there a day and night, man. I yeah. just. Yeah. Um, because it's 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 brilliant. It's it's great. It's great confidence. Everyone <laughs> everyone says that the longer you're at it, the more you love it. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. It's true. But it's hard. Like so you yeah. don't get nothing easy. Like, yeah. They don't give out the bills nilly willy. No, they don't. Never no. thought I'd say nilly willy. But what's the story with uh, Ed O'Neill? Not me, mate. Ed O'Neill from Sweden, but Ed O'Neill is in uh, Married with Children. Didn't he get a black belt? Well, he got a black belt as well. Yeah. yeah. But, you, but you were saying like sometimes they give these old Mickey Mouse, Elvis Presley, <laughs> karate. I think that was back in the day with karate, but I think he's legit. I think so. Ash, yeah. Ash, you said yes. Ashley Ash, Kutcher got his brown belt. Yeah, he got his brown wings. <laughs> <laughs> Ashton Kutcher, any relation to Pat Butcher? <laughs> but uh, yeah, fair play to him, man. You, you think he would have gone on to? How long has he been? Russell Brand's been rolling, apparently. He's got a he's got his blue belt there lately, didn't he? Seems yeah. to be yeah. a, like a cool thing to do. Yeah, you know. But apparently, he was big in the eighties as well. Everyone was at it for a while. Oh, were they? And then died yeah, down again. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they reckon. What, blue belt is the biggest dropout rate, apparently. You were saying yeah. that. Because it's like, grand, got the blue belt now. Yeah, you're like, hey! <laughs> but it's hard, it's not easy. Like, you're tired and you finish work and you roll around with sweaty lads. But then afterwards, you feel better, you know what I mean? I read an article about BJ Penn. Apparently, he was uh, slapping around the uh, the X or something. And he was uh, he's a madman for the dust. I know, the baggings are dust. Baggings are dust, yeah. Baggings are dust. Yeah. Seems to be a lot of it floating around oh, in the uh, MMA world. Oh, that's what you're supposed to say that. Well, that's just floating, floating around, around everywhere. everywhere. In general, like, in oh, right. small town Ireland, it's floating around. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure everyone's on it. Yeah. <laughs> I was uh, playing a gig in Kong the other night, and uh, there was some lad who just had these big, fat rails put on the sink, and I was like, Jesus, man. He goes, do you want to this, man? I'm like, mate, uh, uh, what are you doing? Yeah, and he yeah. goes, uh, ah, sherbet, man, sherbet. I was like... Right. Uh, he goes, yeah, do you want to touch a bit of it? Sure, but I was like, all right. I was like, I'll just show about you, fucker. And he's like, <laughs> I've, I've heard that some pubs have literally taken out everything that has a ledge just to stop people from just, A pub is just one big circle, is it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just like an no, igloo. In the toilets, I mean. Yeah, but they, 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 they did that in Dublin years ago, man. They just, the, all right, the cisterns were, systems, were yeah. yeah, they were like yeah. uh, a slant. Yeah. But sure, then they probably use it unless they. But then, the, then, then they started using the carrots. tops of the doors. You know, tops the, of the doors. The tops of the doors. They'd get a leg up. They'd stand on people's backs. To get oh, that's, up. That's, oh, that's I'm ridiculous. telling you, that's ridiculous. That's just it. <laughs> that's like a comedy sketch. Man, that's <laughs> the boys put it to toilet so, so, like, how give bad me a leg up. <laughs> yeah, how bad you, you, you have to You'd be? think they would have just put a key into the bag. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I have, a, I have a very funny story about a bit of dust in, in Belfast in a cubicle. Go on. And uh, it was just like, your man was speaking Irish to me, and I hadn't a clue what he was on about. And he kept going on about Schnachta. And, I, and it was actually snowing outside. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, was, I kept... Yeah, was Joe Brolly yeah, involved? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I kept nodding, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he kept ushering me in, then. And eventually we ended up in a cubicle. I know this sounds absolutely No, no, go on, go on, go on, go on. And next thing he locked the cubicle of the toilet. And I'm like, what the fuck's going on here? And next thing he took out. And then it was then I realised. He took out a slope, uh, did he? <laughs> <laughs> it was then he, I realised that the schnack that wasn't actually the snow outside. Ah, I see. It was the bagging of dust that came out. Yeah. And you politely declined. And three hours later we left the cubicle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Turns out it was ketamine all along. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's fucking crazy, man. You know how people are coming up to me over the weekend going, do you want to do some schnack down? I was like, nah, mate. But, but it's, it's almost like it's 
it turned into marijuana now. It's so oh, it's, prevalent. Yeah, exactly. You know I mean? Yeah. When we were brought up, it was like it's like Miami eighty eighty four. <laughs> even 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 the lads that even the lads that were in the crane, like, and you could everyone could hear them. Everyone yeah. in, in in the room could hear them. Like, are you coming out for for you know bagging a dust and all this, making it obvious what's yeah. going on. No, like, the term be, begging a dust. What the fuck has happened? But like? it's became it's became they should just legalize the lot. And just tax it, and, and then and make and it regulated, regulated, regulated more. So I suppose that's tax. all you can do with this. I thing. think regulate it and take out the the criminality part. Yeah. Yeah. You know but what it's, it's it's a it's a whole it's an industry in itself. The the drug thing is an industry in itself, and then it's an industry trying to fight it. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. So and yeah, I suppose there's a lot of jobs involved. There's a lot of jobs involved. Well, so. what they do in po- Portugal apparently they've decriminalised the law, and yeah. um they, uh, if you get caught, they they send you to a like an addiction therapy place. You know, right. they evaluate you and they say, "Do you, you know?" It's it's more of they sit down and you go, "Are you all right, mate? Have you got have you got all the?" Because I mean, the, the thing there is, for in in many respects, it is a, um, a health issue. It's a health issue. Yeah, I mean, what's driving people to want to 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 change their uh, their consciousness? Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, it's people are fe- obviously feeling so unfulfilled in their daily lives that they're yeah. turning to drugs to. I, I don't know what it is, but I mean, the, like in Sweden, they have a fucking terrible attitude towards uh, drug use. I was talking to these two guys, one of them was, they were just around the corner from me, and one of them was talking about how he was a heroin addict, but in order to get the methadone, he had to be clean. And so they they treat you like you're you're a criminal. Yeah. Now, one second, let me just tell these two. I, well, I don't know. Martin has left the room. He's left the room. I closed the door. Do, 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 do. Elvis has left the building. But yeah, no, I think it's a health issue more than a criminal issue, do you know what I mean? Yeah, I don't know, it's just... Where once, where once it was a thing that you, it was a taboo around, and now it's just so... Oh, it's it's kind of acceptable, like... I wasn't, I wasn't ever one for narcotics, but... Yeah, yeah. Uh, I just, uh, alcohol always seems to do Women, it. was your narcotics? That was it, <laughs> that was it. I probably was better off if I was on the narcotics. <laughs> exactly. Back in the room. Oh, um, there's, there's kids galore in the house here, and uh, I asked. Halloween, they're all. I implored if they could up. observe the. Uh, the cuteness, the cuteness. Yeah, but sure, it's a functioning house. Well, Martin, you're, you're looking in good shape. What are you up to up there? You're doing a bit of training? I'm doing a lot of bag work, and uh, I just hit the gym, and uh, yeah, just only that. Yeah, I, I spent a lot of time just kind of working away, writing, and. Um, you know, like editing podcasts and all that, and I'm an awful man for missing. Like, I'll have a bit of toast for breakfast, yeah. and then I'll be like, oh, I'll get lunch, and then I'll be like, oh, I've got to get this, finish this. Yeah, yeah. And also the fact that I'm on um, ADHD pills as well, something like they're basically speed. speed yeah, yeah. So uh, you'll, you know, if I if I take them, if I need to kind of like focus. Yeah. And then two o'clock rolls by, I'm like bollocks, I forgot about lunch again. Yeah. So, uh, but it's point. working for you. It's, you, you, you don't have to eat exactly. There's no. I, 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 the more I'm looking into the fasting, the, the dietary things, it's whatever works for you. Yeah, like, everyone is different. Yeah, but they say fasting is is really good for you. I mean, what is it? Yeah. If, if you go, is it two days hours. without? Eat, yeah. What is it? Is it sixteen hours or two days? You start producing more testosterone, apparently. Well, I mean, if you think about it, um, we live in an, an era where everyone you have to eat three meals a day. Yeah, and and you don't have to eat three meals a day. Yeah, no. no. You know, you, uh, I mean, like, if, if you're in the wild and, like, what the hell would you do? You'd be, like, especially if it's over the winter. Yeah. You'd well, to... you know, I borrow a term from falconry, the term fed up, when uh, if a, a bird of prey was fed too much, he was fed up, he wouldn't do any work. Yeah. So, that, you know, in English, would they say he's fed up? Yeah. yeah. So that's when we're just overfed. We, we're, yeah, when we're overfed, we're, we're not motivated to do anything. Do you know what I mean? Do you know, I'll tell you something, Pete, right? And that, that applies to what we've done recently as as a group of people because we had we had a pretty meteoric rise within ireland and like once like oh you refer to the the hardy box, box for example. okay yeah, yeah, yeah. when well, you think about meant, like philosophically oh, no. <laughs> but when you think about it in terms of like we started on we started doing a demo on bebo then it was youtube and after that then it was storyland and then when we got to tv i was kind of thinking like well we've made it to tv now so where do we go from here and and then like after years of doing series and all that, it's not like we could. Everybody has kind of lost the passion to just go out and just y- films meet grilla grilla films yeah, on YouTube. I mean, yeah, yeah, I think because yeah. as soon as everyone started getting paid for shit, it's like, yeah. and then they're working on other jobs. Everyone just got really jaded. Yeah. So like, even I find like I've kind of lost the passion for the comedy a bit. 
Yeah, well, you just need to take a break and come back to it because you're natural born. Plus, I'm in Stockholm as well. Yeah, you're in Stockholm. No, that's right. that, 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 that had a lot to do with it more so. Than, yeah. like, I know that we'd love to go back into making longer videos like, like the YouTube clips. And that's like the the at least you have a crew. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's like, yeah, uh, yeah. I, I just, for me, Stockholm is kind of like kryptonite because it's just not, it, it doesn't suit a mindset like me. You know what mm -hmm. I do? I am. Mm -hmm. Over there, it's just like the rules. Everything right. is like, if you want to do something, you have to like organize it like two weeks in advance. And, yeah, yeah. You're just um, not you anyway. And even even with the band I'm in as well, like it's like it, I, I, like they're, they're amazing musicians. What's the but, band, Martin? Please well, they're session musicians, so they're in about four or five different projects. So, okay. Um, like I I I, I kind of crave just like okay, what are you doing tomorrow? Bang, and then you yeah. you know you, you get some tracks down. So uh, I miss that spontaneity of Ireland. To be honest yeah, with you. Yeah, yeah. you know, it's um it's a different. It's a different pace of life here. I, I think, think sometimes in Ireland the better best way is not to plan anything, just let it. You know, yeah, yeah. Let, let it happen. Yeah, I plan a bit. Plan a bit, yeah. But Who's do you know what plan? I mean about the fed up bit? Of like when you, when you've like oh, what's like, you, well, you're jaded of it, and the characters. I suppose it, it, I think when it went to TV, it became more formulaic. Do you know what I mean? And uh, it had to be story arcs and relationships. Whereas in YouTube, you could have spent ten minutes talking about spiders, like. Do you know what I mean? That was the <laughs> yeah, that's that was the, the magic. Yeah, that was the well. joy of it, and that's that talk about spiders, like. I like, remember we wanted to do a narration of two spiders in the sink, but they were like, no, we can't oh, do yeah. that, we can't do that. And my voice over one spider and your voice over yeah, another I mean, spider. That, that just small little details like that are even like, like, and then there was all these rules where you can't do that in a mockumentary. I was like, Shoot, why can't we have a talking dog? Or You know what I mean? Just I know it could get too zany then, but just experiment with it. And if yeah, you fail, you fail. Exactly, but yeah. just learn from failing, you know? Well, you know, the thing is... Um like the TV is still like the benchmark. Obviously, that's where you're gonna get most funding. Yeah. And then you yeah. can kind of do. I mean, a lot of people like like Owen, for example, or and, and a whole plethora like Tony Campwell and you know other other lads up in Dublin and in America. Like, you know, everyone's kind of gone to either YouTube or Instagram TV mm -hmm. now or Facebook. So. It's, so you basically have all these lads who are going off independently and doing these things and. There's no real like flagship comedy shows anymore. No, no, no. Do you know what I mean? It's uh, yeah, everything has become so um, diluted, homogenized. Kind of, it's all the same. Well, it's it? quick fixes as well. It's it's like uh, you'll see on clickbait. Yeah, just clickbait. Like thirty second clip could do just even better than an actual proper, well thought out ten minute clip or you know like fifteen minute episode or something like that. It's just about that quick fix. Well, that's the problem with social media as well. That's, you can work on a video media. for like two days and then throw a picture up of like a Photoshop picture of a cat with a fucking chicken and it get loads of likes, you know what I mean? But then again, we shouldn't be hunting likes. You should have just like... Yeah, yeah. Creativity. Uh, well, creativity. Well, you see, they, but this is where it gets so confusing because uh, when you get these likes, it's almost like a reaffirmation of what you've done. Is, you know, and it's, yeah. it's a weird fucking it is. paradigm. That's, that, you know, that's a chemical bollocks. in your brain. That's a release in yeah, your brain. Yeah, well, it is a weird paradigm. But and also like... Look at some of the most successful people in the world aren't the most talented. Like the oh, K that's a K fact. K Kardashians. Man. Just because that's a fact. Just because pe mass people like them doesn't mean that they're successful. And you wouldn't want to, Im Im you know, that's true, emulate yeah. that. Yeah. Well, there's 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 people who we know who are doing very well who are fucking, uh, you know, I mean, there's, there's the whole Kruger Dunning effect where people people who think they're more talented than they are yeah. actually the, aren't aware the of their the limitations. They aren't are really talented. Don't think they're talented enough, or vice versa. Yeah, and, and the thing is, it's uh, that mantra: quiet babies don't get sweets. You know, or the wow. the, like the squeakiest boat gets the most oil. Exactly. <laughs> uh, and that's really, the thing. You're really throwing the, the sames at me now. Your turn, like Pete here, always comes up with these. Yeah, yeah, but that's the thing, man. Sales. Like I, I've true. never really been one. I, I don't like. I'm, I'm not great at self promotion because uh, I don't want to come off as being arrogant. But I then, you're very good at self promotion, Martin. You, you sure get better, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but uh, you know, you need to do it. There's, there's a fine line. It's just the way it is. But there's a fine line, isn't it? With that, you don't want to come across as a dick who's just constantly self promoting the whole time. Yeah. And then it's like just trying to find the time. I mean, like the podcast is something I try and, and keep you know going regularly. Yeah. And I mean, sometimes like I mean the Eddie Bravo one I did. You have no idea. Like basically, I rang him and he. he you know, he, he could. He didn't figure out how to use the the, the squadcast thing, so I had to like record with my phone and this uh, Zoom recorder, and then put it together. But the audio was fucking shocking, and the fact that I've got ADHD as well, like I did. Man, I spent like five days clipping that together, trying <laughs> trying to automate. I mean, and there was it would have been a lot quicker had I've learned the shortcuts in Logic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and. Um, 
Well, Logic is a program you're editing. Yeah, but I mean, we... people use Audacity as well for Premiere, but I've just got Logic for free, so I'm like, fucking, I'll have that. Okay. Um, <laughs> but like, I fucking, I forgot to put the final mix up. So I was like, Shite. could you, could you go back and redo it? Yeah, I probably could. But... Just, I tell you, because people are listening to it, it's a great podcast. Yeah, yeah. yeah people have listened well, to it, but I'm it's just the sound puts them off. Small John bit. McAfee is going to be on who, next. I didn't know who Eddie Bravo is because I wouldn't be into the jiu-jitsu I wouldn't be into Joe Rogan. Yeah, and uh, people are going, "No way, he's um, Americans got Eddie, Eddie Bravo, Bravo on." All and excited. I was like, Right, <laughs> I'm not clear who he is. But uh, you didn't talk about jiu-jitsu That's what I was just once, to say. twice. Oh, I think mate, you mentioned it. Was, it. Was like, I might have to ring him up and go, uh, "Do you want to talk about your music and, and rock and roll?" Because as soon as like I was like, I try and keep away from the conspiracy crack, and I was like. <laughs> Life in the fast lane. <laughs> when he Are said, you married it, to the ball? <laughs> when he said, Are you married to the ball? I just like, What? Yeah. <laughs> I've, I've had people send me messages going, Oh, so you're a flat earther now? I'm like, Oh, fucking hell, man. Uh, look, I'm open minded to fucking everything because, I mean, I don't want to be too open minded, but I don't want to be close minded. I mean, it's just, you know, I'll, I'll hear people out. Do you know what I mean? I'm, yeah. Like, I'm not the kind of person who I've never really. I've never been confrontational with people's views. Yeah, well, that's it. I think if you're steadfast in your beliefs about things, you become dogmatic. You know what I mean? And it's always good to be open-minded about. Yeah, things. it is. It's, it's always yeah, exactly yeah. because uh, no one. And if knows. and if you if that was one of his, you know, strong beliefs beliefs, and no one's you, not insulting. If you dismissed dismissed him straight away, he's not going to talk either. Like, do you exactly, know what I mean? Yeah. Do you know? Uh, I look at, and I think uh, people are entitled to their beliefs, Matt, because it's like. Everything is an individual experience to the person experiencing life mm. firsthand. So, like, if that's what they believe and it's not doing any harm to anyone, you know, say la vie. Yeah. Well, there's a famous quote from the Flat Earthers, like, we've got a movement all around the earth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All over the world. All over the world, isn't it? Yeah. All around the world. All around the world. All around the world. You've got to spread the word, yeah. as Liam uh, Norwood of sang. So uh, yeah, man, fucking, that was a nice little, a tasty little podcast. Because you, you've got to go somewhere, Steve. We, we have to head off now. I, we have things to do. Actually, we're in Westport tonight. The t- tonight is the thirty first. If this goes up, it's Halloween night, night. Yeah. What are you doing night. in Westport? Big just, just hanging out yeah. in uh, yeah, right, so. the castle venue. You're gonna get three pints. Well, I might have a few pints. Ooh, yeah. what time are you off up to Dublin tomorrow? We will be heading up around uh, half four. Is it? Yeah, around half four. And do you know what we're going to do tomorrow night? Might even check out Fred Cook's Vicar Street gig. Fred Cook's doing Vicar Street, Vicar, yeah. Oh, fair play to the Cookie Monster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was hoping to see him there at the weekend. I didn't see him, but uh, I met. I did meet Terry Alderton. Uh, I met Steve Frost. Of uh, he was in Whose Lines anyway. I remember the last time when me and Collie did that gig in Bray, man. It was just fucking terrible. And he was, I was like, yeah, I, I've moved on a good bit since then. So um, yeah, he was sound and uh, Andrew Maxwell. It's the uh, it's the taste of Maxwell House that makes a house a home. <laughs> and, uh, did you meet him the weekend? Did you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, did you meet all the crew? All the crew, man. Yeah, yeah. All, all, all the all the big swinging comedy. Where is so? What are you? Stories? When did you head back to Sweden? One day is it? Yeah, so I've got to go to Dublin on Sunday, and then I've got to oh, and then I'll go come back from Dublin on Sunday, and then go back to fucking Dublin and fly out on the Monday. So yeah, it's going to yeah. be a lot of travel. You can go with us on the Sunday. Yeah. Have you any plans to come back to Ireland? Yeah, I might have to come. I'm going to be back in. I've got a few gigs lined up in um, in December. And listen, if you if anyone listen out there need me and the boys to come out and do some gigs, man, just get in touch. Yeah. Maloney one hundred one on Instagram, lads. Three bucks left on yeah. Instagram and or, Facebook. Yeah, yeah, Eddie Durkin on Facebook, and uh, yeah, just get in touch, man. Um, we're we're guns for hire. We, we promise you, it'll be a show like no other. Yeah. It'll be a show. Like Vic and Bob on a cocktail of Viagra and steroids. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Marching. Stevie and Pete, man, it's good to have you down in the, the Casa del uh, Revo, whatever that means, I have no idea. You're a good idea. man, you're a good man. You're a good lad yourselves, man. Yeah. Cheers, cheers, we're all good lads. Looking lads. forward yeah. to. Will to we take us. the tops off, will we? I guess so, yeah. Yeah, we'll take oh, the we'll them back on. We'll put the trousers back on. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, before, before we go, how's life around Mayo? Do you, do you enjoy living down here in Mayo? You're up in Leitrim now. I'm in Leitrim, yeah, not too far from Kinlock. Big shout out to the Kinlock Massive. Have they, have got, <laughs> are the roads still shite up there? Uh, not too bad, no, not too bad. They're doing them up all the time. Well, the drivers are shite. <laughs> oh. <laughs> hey, my driving instructor told me Ross Common drivers were the worst drivers. I heard the Ross Common were the worst. Why, why, well. why would they be? Why would that? I don't know, they're just full of testosterone, I suppose. Like, I was like, girls. <laughs> 
Oh, so if you went up around like the Donegal Street Ban area. Oh, like, sorry, the Donegal, yeah, they can't Donny try Gaul slow. They cannot yeah, try yeah. slow. No, if you no. see a young fella and the lights are going red, he has to go as fast bother. as possible to the lights. Yeah, I mean, you'd be and worried if they were driving the slowly, but yeah, what's up with that light? You know? They don't bother with um, continuous white lines up there, either. there's no, no point. No. <laughs> 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 it's about to snap to you, is it? <laughs> yeah. Oh. Hey. Right, uh, that's it. Yeah, all right, yeah. lads. Well, look, um, I will see you later on and. Um, Good luck to you, good and, uh, and we'll uh, we'll have a good laugh on Saturday night. I'll get this up today if I can. Yeah, perfect. And I've also got another podcast with Adam Britton, the world's leading uh, herpetologist. Uh, oh wow! He has his own five meter saltwater crocodile out in his back garden. So I had a good. As you uh, do. As you do. Well, no, where did, does he live? He lives in Darwin. Wow. So I had a good. I, I was talking to him, and during the podcast I had with him, I was talking about this documentary. You might have seen it as well. It was back in ni- 1999. It was on BBC. It was called The Secret Life of Crocodiles, wow. and they were looking for the cure for gangrene. I won't. I won't ruin it. Don't ruin it. Don't ruin but, it. Um, Sounds interesting. Yeah, this, the, I had some brilliant. I, I've been into like crocodiles and alligators since I was a kid. So uh, to talk to that guy was really impressive. And then uh, John McAfee. I'm getting that sorted out. John McAfee is one so of your uh, mates from back. Did I meet him? Did I? John McAfee was the guy who did McAfee Antivirus. Oh, sorry, I thought it was one of your mates from Dublin. Sorry, oh, yes, right. McCaffrey from... Are you getting him on? Well, wow. I'm, I'm in talks with him. Computer yeah. viruses, is it? Yeah. All oh, right. Yeah, yeah wow. so he, he's an interesting character, he's to a, say the he least. He's a documentary on Netflix about him, isn't there? Yeah, and look, uh, you guys out there, if you have anyone who you would like me to get in touch with, uh, hit me up with suggestions, and uh, yeah, I'll, I'll get it sorted. But uh, I just want to say thank you very much for listening, and... Uh, Get in touch uh, if you like it, uh, if you really like it. Throw us a few quid on Patreon. It, it, it greatly helps because uh, a man's working hard and he's worth a deuce. These two lads, Stevie Kelly and Pete Cass, good old friends of mine. Known them since I, uh, since before I had uh, hair on my balls. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I don't know. I think you had a little bit of hair. And I, blo- I blondies on me sack, man. I blondies on me sack. Hey, Cody, you watching the UFC tonight? Who's, who's oh, playing? That's right. It's... Uh... Saturday night, the UFC. I haven't, I haven't watched the UFC in ages, man. We won't be watching it because we'll be having the crack in the Grand Social. We'll exactly. be having the crack in the Grand Social. Who's fighting? Mazadal and Diaz. And right. uh, the uh, Scouser lad is fighting. Darren Till. Darren fight, Till is fighting Gaslam. Yeah, I, as, you know, when I'm not training, I have no interest in it. It's only yeah. when you go back to training in the gym that everyone's like, oh, have you seen the lit? Have you seen Are you going to watch the next fight? And I'm like, who's fighting? And then yeah. just, it's a bit like when you're talking to taxi drivers about football, you have to kind of keep your eye on it. And yeah, just, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, look, I can see Stephen Kelly's making the I am indeed. The I get itchy. I get itchy. Yeah, he's got ADHD as well. All right, dudes. Take care. <laughs> Chat to you later. Bye bye.